There is new news for the Z9 and let me start with the ones that I think are most important, most interesting and almost in a way groundbreaking. Nikon rumors say that uh, there is going to be no rolling shutter for the Z9 sensor and uh, the article also claims that the sensor readout speed for the Z9 is going to be faster than that of the R3 and the A1. Now, mind you, the speed read, uh, sensor readout speed for the A1 and the R3 um, it's very similar to a mechanical shutter. So if the Z9 can read the sensor faster than that, then it's going to be faster than a mechanical shutter. And you know why, where that takes us? That takes the Z9 to a camera with a global shutter territory. Yeah, it, it, it literally, that, that's what literally this means. Now, um, so if that's true, we're going to have a camera that's very, that, that's, that's, almost going to have a global sh shutter Nikon are not claiming it yet but it's maybe that's what the next teaser is all about because and I'm just joining the dots here uh, they've also said that this could be the first camera without a mechanical shutter now if that's so we are really here talking about the first like mirrorless camera with a global shutter and I don't know if it is true but I think it it could be true. It, 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 there's a very high chance that it's true. Because I haven't seen Nikon rumors go wrong much. Not really, not much. Um, now, there is another big implication of this. Uh, the, the other big implication is that, you remember how the A1 can do 1 400th of a second uh, flash sync speed? If this sensor readout uh, speed is faster than that of the A1 and the R3, it will probably have even faster sync speed. Maybe it will have 1000 of a second uh, uh, sync speed with a flash flash in it. And, and if that's true, that's <laughs> that's bonkers, okay? And I'm again joining the dots here. A few days back, Nikon Rumors also published uh, a few uh, sort of responses from some people who have claimed to use the camera. And they said, you know, this is not a catch-up game for Nikon. This is winning the game squarely. This is... a a leap that Nikon is taking the Z9, and 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 I and I think this could be it. This could be the reason because you know what? The, uh, there's another thing. I'll just try to make sense of this entire thing for you. You remember how Nik uh, we already know that uh, the sensor is going to have a protective uh, sort of shutter, protective shutter, right? Now you know that the Nikon system, the Z system, ha already. Uh, has the shallowest flange distance it's only 16 mm now that within that space you need to have space for this uh, the metal mount and you need to have space a little bit of a gap in between for the shutter to kind of you know work now if you are going to implement another shutter cover and that's what i sort of sensor cover that's what i first thought of when i first heard the news of a sensor cover is how can nikon manage to fit all that shutter and then a mechanical shutter and then a sensor cover within that tiny like tiny gap between the mount and the sensor i mean it's 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 incredible but now it makes sense what if the camera does not have a mechanical shutter in reality then it makes sense you can actually not have a mechanical shutter and use the space to have a mechanism that sort of protects the camera the sensor so now it kind of all all of these things kind of add up and make a singularly understandable s story and if that is so we might have a camera with a global shutter oh my god um yeah and i'm going to, i'm going to talk about what this means for the uh, mere mortals so the rest of us who are probably not going to buy a z9 um a bit later but now let's talk about the other thing the new rumors also suggest that there's going to be anim animal detect bird eye af cars and motorcycle and also planes so at one go, you're going to have everything, everything that the others uh, have been boasting about. Uh, I think I think that this is a bit of a, probably a bit of a catch-up, but the sensor tech is probably not a catch-up. That's, I think, a huge leap. Um, now, all of these algorithms will, of course, uh, kind of help us out because, you know, I'm sure Nikon will release version two of uh, the firmware for the Z72 and the Z62. So, um, yeah, we're all kind of, and I'm, I'm also reiterating that so that, you know, if Nikon is, anyone from Nikon is watching this, 
um, I, I won't want all of them to get the message. I want to uh, repetitively talk about the fact that we're all expecting firmware 2.0 and we're expecting huge upgrade in the autofocus capabilities and probably new uh, you know, pattern detection capabilities like bird and animal detect capabilities. So now the other thing, the uh, third very important and it's, it's equally crazy thing is uh, it will probably also have 8K. We all already know that it's going to do 8K 30 and for at least an hour and 20 minutes. Now we have news that says it's going to do 8K 60 for one hour. Yeah. There's a time limit for one hour, but 8K60, guys, the Sony A1 can do 8K30 for 30 minutes. Now, if you just do a simple calculation, that's like what? Uh, double the time and then double the frame rate. So it's like four times more capability. So could this camera actually be four times as powerful as the A1? Did the, can the sensor be four times as powerful? Can the entire, the end, all of the engineering that's been uh, put in the camera does this make this like is it four times better that's my question i mean and then then um they say that the pricing is going to be a surprise and sort of a good surprise so okay the a1 is uh 6500 the r3 is uh like six thousand dollars could this be uh, five and a half thousand dollars? Could this be um, six thousand dollars? Okay, why not five and a half thousand dollars? I mean, if you're really going for it, go for it. Go the whole hog, man. I mean, why not? This could just, they could own the entire flagship market, the pricing like, um, uh, like if, if they do pricing, if, if the price is at five and a half thousand US dollars, and then you know how good the, uh, uh, Z lenses are everyone knows that you know, no one can pretend, right? Everyone knows that the fact that now this camera is already such a great camera for filmmakers, for video makers, film makers, and all of these lenses are extremely good for video, they don't focus breathe at all. So, it, it kind of all adds up, and, and I think it, it makes a lot of sense for um, it makes some sense for Nikon to price it at five and a half thousand dollars and kind of target the entire flagship market and because you know if you get the leaders the rest of the guys will follow yeah that that's what i think now what does it all mean for uh, the mere mortals for people like us right um now you see you must have seen how the a7 IV have been is being called the baby a1 some people call it uh, calling it the baby a9 but some are also calling it the baby a1 why because well it does a few things that you see in the a1 but more importantly, you see, you understand how the A1 tech is sort of uh, coming down to the A7 IV, right? And that's that's the expectation here, and that's why people are excited about the Z9 uh, overall. So the Z9 tech will then come to the other bodies, and we're expecting some of that tech in the form of firmware. But more importantly, more importantly. Uh, this means that for all the Z9 tech to become relevant for a sort of a mid-level new body, Sony, uh, Nikon cannot go the Sony way. Nikon cannot make uh, a A7 IV. I'll tell you why. what I mean by that and, and, and I'll tell you why I say that. You see, the A7 IV practically uses the same old sensor, but they've kind of carved out of more megapixel out of the same sensor. It's like a, it's not a new sensor tech. It feels like it's the same uh, full frame sensor instead of 24 megapixel now it has 33. So the sensor readout speed some say uh, is even slightly slower than the A7 III and that's why when you go uh, and watch those videos the jello effect is probably slightly higher for the A7 IV. So and, and 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 of course they cannot do full it, the camera cannot do full frame uh, uh, 4K 60, which means that the sensor the Sony is using for the A7 IV is, has not kept up with the times. And I want the Z6 III to keep up with the times. And whenever the Z6 III comes out in the next like six months or eight months, it cannot go down go down the A7 IV path. I think they should use some of the same stacked sensor technology and put that in the Z, uh, Z6 III. Or if they do not do that, 
then the strategy is going to be different. Then you have a sort of a similar camera, the Nikon version of the A7 IV, uh, in the form of the Z6 III, and you're going to have a Nikon version of the A7 R4 in 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 the Z7 III. So it's probably going to be somewhere between 60 megapixel to 80 megapixel. Um, then, if that's clear, if you all understand that you know it's it's uh, the Z6 III is an entry level sort of you know do it all uh, photo video camera, uh, and and the Z7 three is for uh, landscape and for portrait shoots for uh, you know studio shoots and all of that where you need a lot of megapixel you want a lot of me 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 megapixel there maybe then the z8's role becomes very clearer could it be and i i kind of i kind of expect i want it to be sort of like a 35 megapixel stack sensor camera with a flip screen 4k 120 and 6k 60 um now that becomes a beautiful replacement for the Z8850, you know, Z850 replacement in the form of the Z8 with technology that uh, we have in 2022 and which is sort of more, uh, which is sort of future proof for 2023, 4 and 5. Because if we look at the D850, that's, that's a camera that have been quite future proof for 3 to 4 years. So the Z8 should be that and for it to beep future proof it cannot be just bsi it has to be stacked sensor it's fine if it's somewhere between 30 and 40 megapixel it should have a flip screen because the world has changed now right so uh, like nikon moved from just having a fixed fixed screen to having a flip screen right they've done that so the world now demands more they've they've moved away from having a only a tilt screen to having a three-way tilt screen for the Z9. So they understand that the world is changing. And I'm sure they would understand why something like a Z8 would need a flip screen. Um, so that's what I think, guys. And I think this is, an, this is, this is exciting. This is mind-blowing. Uh, it just renders the A1 so irrelevant if all of what we, what we are hearing are, are true. It renders the A1 irrelevant. And there's a huge task for Canon uh, to make the R1 even kind of touch the Z9. So I completely agree. I completely kind of, everything sort of match up, everything everything matches up and I completely understand when people say, when you hear rumors like, you know, the Z9 is a huge leap forward and it's not about just catching up and I believe that. And I believe that some of these bigger channels who kind of, oh, scoff at Nikon, <laughs> they're going to wake up and I think it's going to be, it's going to change the game, guys. See you. And if you like this content, do subscribe. Support me, guys. I mean, support me. Why not? Oh, that sounds a little weird. So if this content is useful, do like this video and, uh, you know, subscribe if you like. I can't force you, but, well, it's free. You know, it just helps me out, guys. That's all. It helps me reach more people and create this community. And we're, we're kind of doing good stuff here. We're kind of doing good stuff. Yeah. See you.